Why do we vote to elect people to serve as our political leaders? What are the expectations for how these elected officials make decisions? Are they supposed to act and vote in the way they think is most just? Or are they supposed to vote along their so-called party line? That is, are they supposed to vote on each issue as the party leaders say they should vote? And what drives these people to seek an elected political office? Are they looking for power? Or are they genuinely concerned with justice and doing the right thing? In the United States, we vote to elect people to serve in the Senate and House of Representatives. The House is supposed to be the people's group. They have relatively short terms and are very close to the constituency, which are the people who elected them. The Senate, on the other hand, is a smaller, more prestigious group with longer terms of service. The Senate is supposed to be less partisan, but is it? When Donald Trump was impeached as President of the United States for the first time, two charges were brought against him. On the first charge, 99 of the 100 senators voted along their party line. On the second charge, 100 out of 100 senators voted along their party line. 47 Democrats said he was guilty and 53 Republicans said he was not. The sole, single, only senator to cross their party line on either charge was Mitt Romney, a Republican. This cannot be what the Founding Fathers intended. A Senate vote to acquit or convict a president following impeachment by the House is intended to be a nonpartisan decision. The senators are determining whether or not the president committed serious crimes. There's a formal trial before they vote with witnesses and evidence. Voting purely based on party affiliation is absurd. Yet that is clearly what some portion of the most powerful elected officials in the world did. They checked their objectivity at the door and voted down the party line. And remember, the Senate is supposed to be less partisan than that compared to the House. The six-year terms that senators serve are meant to free them from fear of backlash from capricious constituents. Senators are supposed to vote according to what they think is the right decision on a given issue, rather than rotely based on party politics. And by right, I mean just, a, a decision that is, as well as they can possibly determine, the best decision for the collective interests of the people affected by it. So then how can we encourage less partisan behavior from our elected officials? One idea that has received plenty of attention is imposing term limits, restricting the number of terms that a senator or representative can serve. The goal with term limits is that uh, by taking away some of an official's concern about re-election, he or she will vote more objectively. Perhaps, although we're not talking about term limits today, the topic du jour is sortition and has received a lot less attention than term limits. However, I think it's very interesting and has a lot of potential to reduce partisanship. Sortition is the process of choosing representatives for political office randomly by selecting them by lottery from a large pool of eligible candidates. The primary purpose of sortition is to better ensure that a society's official representatives more closely resemble the beliefs and perspectives of its population. What better way to ensure a government of the people, by the people, and for the people than to randomly select the people that govern? In the United States two-party system, the party platforms tend toward the moderate middle, looking to grab as many votes as they can from undecided voters, rather than taking less popular, perhaps more interesting, innovative, and perhaps even more effective approaches. And the party's platforms are heavily influenced by corporations and large political donors, which don't necessarily represent the views of the average citizen. We can see examples of sortition throughout history in Italy, Switzerland, and India. Perhaps the most significant use of sortition was in Athens, Greece, the birthplace of democracy. There they viewed sortition as a critical tool to ensure a fair, well-functioning democracy. And it seems like they might have been onto something. If this is the first time you've heard about sortition, you might be thinking that it seems crazy to randomly select people to serve as officials. After all, that's how we pick juries in the United States, and most people don't think of the typical jury pool as the absolute best source of qualified leaders for our country. And some people have zero desire to serve in public office. What about those people? Are, are they required to serve? How, how does this all work? The answer is that a society that implements sortition can make whatever rules it wants to make. There's no standard accepted version of sortition. And in Athens, ranging as far back as the 6th century, candidates had to be male, over the age of 30, of Athenian descent on both sides, and possessed the physical capacity for military service. Obviously, few people would think that all those requirements are appropriate in our modern era. I can't even imagine requiring people to serve. I think we would want those who are chosen to have the desire to serve, which means the system has to be opt-in. 
and it would make sense to have a minimum requirement for age and base level mental competency, as well as a certain number of years living as a citizen of the country uh, for which you're going to serve. The point here is there would be some requirements to be eligible for the lottery. Now it's estimated that 50 to 70% of eligible Athenians served at least one year on the Council 500, their branch of government responsible for developing legislation. Overall, proponents say that sortition is a great solution to many of our current ails. It enables a political system that is more representative of the general population. It promotes cognitive diversity, which is the idea that selecting random people of average intelligence to work at solving problems together is optimal over collecting the sharpest individual problem solvers. Sortition also has the potential to minimize biases based on race, religion, and sex, and promote fairness across demographic lines. It should be far less corruptible than a more traditional system of voting. And it may have the effect of increasing political awareness and activism in the general population because it empowers ordinary people who may see the value of preparing to be elected by staying more informed about current political issues. So those are some of the arguments for sortition. What are some of the arguments against it? Now, probably the most common argument against sortition concerns the issue of competency. If we chose leaders at random, requiring only a few basic eligibility requirements, are we really likely to select the most qualified people to serve? In matters of the state, mastery and intellect are important qualifications, and offering the job up to anyone who simply has the gall to run for it puts a lot of important decisions in the hand of someone, someone's who may not be the most fit possible to up the base qualifications for certain positions, although if those qualifications are raised too high, it would cut against Sortition's primary goal of ensuring representation of the broadest possible array of beliefs and perspectives. Then there's the issue of support and confidence. I'm sure there will always be plenty of haters, but in the United States at least, presidents typically have approval ratings that hover around 50%. JFK had an approval rating as high as 83% at one point in his term, and George W. Bush's ratings reached 89%. Now, some of the influencing factors for the ratings come from, comes from the fact that they were elected in the first place, that they're highly accomplished, and that they looked and acted the part of a president. Now, those traits aren't likely to apply to my next-door neighbor if she's randomly chosen to serve. Of course, if we implemented sortition in the U.S., it doesn't mean we would have to use it for the president, but the point is there's value in people being able to know and choose their officials, and it is unlikely that randomly chosen officials would have anywhere near as much general support as elected officials do. Another argument against sortition is also a popular argument against term limits, which we mentioned earlier. And that is that the concern about getting reelected creates accountability, ensuring that there are consequences for making decisions that do not have sufficient public support. So what do you think? Is sortition an improvement to a traditional voting system? Is it really a non-biased way to appoint public officials? Or is it an overly simplistic approach whose costs would far outweigh its benefits? Let us know in the comments below. <laughs>